Good morning, guys. How are you? Saturday morning here. Um, just wanted to try to get a teaching in before Sunday. I think Mike is going to be doing John 16. And so I'm also going to follow along and, and head in that direction. Um, different background. I'm getting to be like a hippie, so I got to keep my hat on because my hair is getting really long. I don't know how I'm going to manage this at work, but uh, we're going to do it, okay, until we can get haircuts again. Um, new house, new background. There's junk all over the floor. I'll spare you that show, uh, but we are moving through it, okay? Um, I got to tell you, uh, Robin got an email from one of the moms. Uh, she told me about this yesterday. I don't know when it got sent out. Um, we've been so busy. It could have gone out several days ago. And uh, it, it was so nice. And I, I got to tell you, it was a huge encouragement to me just to hear that one of you guys said something to your mom and that you enjoy the teachings or something along those lines that you appreciate them. And, and, uh, that was a huge encouragement. So I, I heard that yesterday and I had already planned on doing this today, but it was, uh, it, it nothing was going to stop me shy of Jesus saying, don't teach. Right. Which I, I don't hear him saying that to me. So anyways, uh, you guys are, are a huge encouragement to me and, uh, you are my first official ministry. So Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus, uh, for that. So this is going to be really raw again. Uh, I've been trying to put this house together. Uh, we're trying to get everything organized. Um, so what I've done is I have probably read over this chapter in John five, six times. And uh, I, I really haven't had time to listen uh, to other uh, teachers and uh, read the Blue Letter Bible commentaries. So uh, I'm not like going to get real theological and and this is just uh, this is just me again. One of those I'm super busy, but I I wanted to try to share some stuff with you that that might be pertinent about this scripture. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, dear Lord, thank you for the time with uh, your children this morning. I lift their hearts up to you. Uh, I thank you uh, that, um, that they're there to encourage me to be in the word so that I might bring something to them. It's, you're using them, Lord, to affect my life. And I appreciate that very much. And I want them to know that. And um, What an amazing thing to have received a ministry from you. It's just a blessing. I love these guys, um, and I thank you for this experience in my life. Um, please uh, let your Holy Spirit work through me right now and, and, and teach them something that you want them to hear, what you want them to know. Nothing more, nothing less. Help me not add a single thing to your word that's not in it. In Jesus' precious name and precious word, amen. All right. So uh, what I was thinking you might want to do uh, I'm going to back up a little bit into John 15, because I think it's important. And um, at John 15, verse 8, through the whole chapter of John 16 is what I'm going to talk about. I'm not going to even read a lot from the Bible. So I thought maybe what we'll do is that's the scripture it's on. If you want to pause this and go read it, it might make it more meaningful. And it won't take you that long. It's not a lot. It's about a page uh, page and a little bit over a page, page and a third, maybe. So that's up to you. Um, but anyways, uh, the way my Bible has it organized, I'm working out of an NIV, uh, the right before verse 18 in chapter 15, the heading is the world hates the disciples. And then just before 16 starts, it says the work of the Holy Spirit. So, um, interesting. Uh, we've gone here before, guys, and, and this is where it is. We've talked about this, right? And I'm going to try to do this 
from your perspective so you can get back to where we were, right? I always put this up on our whiteboard. I've done this many times. Up on the left, I have the globe. I try to draw an Eric version of the globe, right? And then on the right, as you turn in a more conservative direction, right? Rightward turns lead you to Jesus, hopefully. Um, and when you start moving to the left and getting liberal and progressive, we start heading towards the thinking of this world. And that's not where Jesus wants us to be, okay? So the world, the culture, the imposter who has control and uh, is in charge of much of this world today, except for us, and Jesus, okay? Um, I thought that was a good visual reference, so you can keep that in your head as we go through this, because I'm going to go back into some of the things we've talked about before, okay? And I have notes. You're going to see me looking at them a lot, because this is on the fly here, okay? Forgive me. Um, guys, this, Jesus, this is all just my opinion, my thoughts. I pray that they're right for you. As I read this, uh, this scripture, I see Jesus. This is like the last conversation he has with his disciples before he dies, okay? Because in John chapter 17, he's not actually talking to them. He's praying to God. And so this chapter is, is the end before he dies. And he's got super important information to convey to them, okay? And that's why... I was saying the last two headings here is the world hates the disciples and the work of the Holy Spirit. And, and we're holding those two subject headings right up next to each other. And what does that mean for you and I as we move forward in this time, right now? COVID-19, progressive thinking is tearing God completely out of our country and I believe we're probably on the verge of being persecuted for our faith um, as we watch this great falling away take place, okay? And that's part of where we're going. Um, but he's, he's transitioning them. And I think, you know, we have the Bible. We can look back over all of this history and, and see by reading what they went through. And we kind of get the whole picture because we're flying at 30,000 feet. Well, they're right down on the ground with Jesus and they're living in the physical world and Jesus presents himself to them. And now he's got to get them kind of where we are, where we have the Holy Spirit, but they didn't yet. They had Jesus in the physical world, and he's got to get them in their mind around letting him go and receiving the spirit that will guide them. So that's important. Um, going from the scene to the unseen, okay? Converting them from Jesus in the physical to now functioning in the spirit, okay? Um, he's, he's doing this by talking to them and he's like saying what's gonna happen, right? He's trying to prepare them. He's literally telling them what is gonna happen, which is in a way a prophecy because he knows he's coming back. So he's saying, I'm going to die. I'm going away, and then I'll come back. And, um, and then he says, I'm going to leave again, but I will send you the advocate. Okay? So I'm going to leave. You're going to be incredibly sad. You're going to be overwhelmed. But I'll be back. And then I'm going to go away again but then I'll be back. The Holy Spirit will be, right? Okay, so you get it? And he's mentally preparing them. So as these things happen, they'll get it. And I think it'll stick more, okay? It's like, wow, he told us he was coming back. This really is true. He was dead. We saw him. Now he's back. Um, I saw a movie, we just watched this again recently, it's called Risen, and I may have mentioned this in one of the other uh, teachings I did. It was a really cool movie. I'm gonna 
make a plug for that again for you guys. This is a family movie. Mom and dad can probably be comfortable letting you see this. If you haven't done it yet, watch it. And I think there was a point in this movie uh, where Philip, if I didn't say this already, Philip is talking to Prefect, that Roman leader who is trying to find Jesus's body so they can quell all the uh, spiritual stuff that's going on. They want, uh, they don't want an uprising of all the people that were following Jesus against the Romans and against the leadership of the Jews because he was killed. And, and Philip, after Jesus died, they had seen him again. And so Philip was talking to prefect and he was just, just floating on a cloud excited about what was going on and you could just see it in his face the acting was really cool and it's almost like yeah that's how I would feel right and it was that's what Jesus was trying to accomplish he was trying to prepare them for that and then give that kind of faith to them so no matter what was going on they were full of joy he was he was like if they were going to crucify him he could care less because he knew where he was going and so Jesus was purposeful. He knew what they needed and he gave it to them. And he knows what you need and he has given it to you. And now you and I have to nurture what he's given us. Remember, the world over here hates the disciples over here on your right side, right? Okay, so that's part of the lesson. Jesus said... Uh, part of what he says here is uh, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. Uh, he will, um, I, no, I'm sorry, I'm, I got ahead of myself. Up here, all this I have told you so that you will not fall away. He was bringing the Holy Spirit and he said, I'm going to read this real quick. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you must also testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. All of this I have told you so that you will not fall away. He was preparing them because they, the left, the world was going to come after them. The religious Jews were going to come after those guys because they were going to basically propagate the church. They were going to give birth to that church and lead that church and spread that gospel and the word about Jesus to all nations. But they were more concerned about just them and that time, right? And so he was trying to say, the world is coming after you. I'm sending you the advocate who will lead you into all truth. They're going to come after you and persecute you because they persecuted me. So that's where I want to continue, all right? We have been given this gift, this Holy Spirit, okay? Um, it is there to guide us. It is there to reassure us. It is our connection to truth. And I'm going to read you this about what's happening in the world today, okay? It's almost like what was happening to them back then is going to be happening to us. We are disciples of Christ. That's who we are. That's who we're becoming, right? Does your life look like that? Um, we've talked about this. I've challenged you about this over and over again because it's so important. Um, we've been given this gift. He's entrusted us with himself uh, in his invisible spirit form, right? He's put that into us and we have to be a, a good steward over that responsibility. And um, there is something called the falling away, the great apostasy that's supposed to happen in the end before the man of perdition, the Antichrist, is revealed. But not until that time, the great falling away must happen first. Talk to your parents, watch, listen to all the different things out there. I think it's happening now. I think that's the, the our world is declining and it has been for a long time, but it seems like it's ramping up. I told you recently about 
Jenna and I were driving along in the car and we looked over and I saw a gay and lesbian flag flying on a, a, a flagpole out in front of a Methodist or a Lutheran Methodist church. Couldn't believe it. That's exa an example of the falling of, of the of the falling away, okay, where the churches, these are technically our brothers and sisters in Christ, and they're starting to do these kinds of things, which is against God's teaching, right? Now, brethren, this is 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 1 through 3, and just listen to this. It says, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. That falling away, the great apostasy, okay? It's, it's, the church is being fractured, okay? And God talks about, in his words, separating the sheep from the goats, okay? The goats would be, that would be the example of that. So we have the world, the culture, the secular world, pagan, right? They don't believe in God or they believe in 8 million gods, right? That's part of the world culture, all-inclusive, multiple ways to Jesus. Then there's the Christian church that, that exists on that world. And within that body of what would be called the Christian church, that's where that falling away is going to be seen, the apostasy where a big group of Christian believers start to water down their faith, soothe their itching ears with preaching that allows them to bring gay and lesbian uh, into the church, and which we would encourage too, but when a gay person comes into the church, we would say that they have to leave that life, right? That, that God doesn't, that's not what the, the Bible teaches, that you have to repent from that. We welcome all people. Jesus welcomed us into his kingdom. Look at how much sin we committed, but we had to let that go. Okay, and that's when when th they are going to take that into a direction where they are probably going to start persecuting us. It might come from within our own home, right? Our own body. When that group falls away, they may turn on us and the world in general is going to turn on us. Okay, I'm probably getting carried away here because I haven't really spent a lot of time organizing this talk. <laughs> I, I will continue to move forward. Anyway, um, separating the sheep from the goats, we are with Jesus. We are the remnant church. That I'm confident of. When I look at our church at, at Calvary Chapel, Cleveland, that's remnant. That's Philadelphia. That's a place I don't want to have my family leave. Um, it's quite a drive, but it's worth it, right? That's why we're there. That's why people come from all over. Chris and Betty Sprague come from Cuyahoga Falls. I think they have like a 40 minute drive to get to that church. Stay at that church. Okay, so the advocate. Jesus in this chapter is talking about the advocate. The spirit of truth will guide you into all truth, okay? He will glorify me. So there's, 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 Two big things we have to know about the Holy Spirit. That's what they are. He will, the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. He will not mislead you. When he's communicating with you, it will only be in a direction that is true and that glorifies God. It guides us into truth and it glorifies Jesus. And, and I wanted to take us back to some of the old teachings that I, I was talking about. And this is straight from Mike, Pastor Mike. As you go through your day and you get these thoughts in your head, thoughts about whatever, um, about money, about your candy, about your brother or sister, um, 
about a neighbor who stole something out of your backyard, right? Any of these thoughts that come into your head, they're from four places, right? We've already talked about this. Th and things that we think about can come from the world, the culture that has an influence over us. Hopefully not. It can come from darkness, right? From spiritual darkness. I don't know if Satan is bothering you and I, uh, but his minions and the general pervasive evil in the world. Uh, it could come from our own mind, right? Um, you start getting prideful about something and you, you think you're something that you're not, and that's coming from you, your brain, right? Or it can come from the Holy Spirit, okay? Four places, everything you think, okay? So you, this is how you can start to use this as a practical way of living. This advocate that I've been given, how can I figure out this is him versus darkness, the world, or myself? And then a test that we've talked about before, a test for you with everything that you think, that you say, that you do. There's three things you can ask yourself. Is it true? Is it necessary? And is it kind, right? So your sister steals your candy. You get mad at her, you yell at her and do something inappropriate, whatever that is, right? T to get her back. Is it true? Yes, she stole your candy. And you went and ruined something of hers. You wrecked it. You lost something of value, so you're going to take something of value and destroy it, right? Was that necessary? Nope. Was it kind? Nope. Okay, so was the Holy Spirit in that action or those thoughts? No, right? Is it true? Is it necessary? Is it kind? If, if I were you, I would take my Bible, what I do with, with little teachings like this. I've got them written all over the front front area. Um, that's probably the only page I can show you. L little things like here, I'll put notes on these open pages because I'll remember I have stuff there and I'll go back to that, okay? And write down uh, the world, darkness, myself, or the Holy Spirit. Those are the four places that thoughts come to you from, okay? And then you can put a little place called the test. And is it true? Is it necessary? And is it kind? Okay? And you can go back to that. You won't, you won't, you won't forget it because it's in your Bible. The one you keep, the one you read, it's right there. And you can go read that once a week, once a day. You can just, in the Lord, Help me see these things. Help me understand them. Help help them become habit for me. So when I'm about to, you know, you, your sister steals your, I'm sorry, now it's your brother. Your brother steals your candy next week again, right? He steals it again. But you're, you're armed now. And then you sit there and you get super mad. But you have a little bit of a pause. I know I'm mad at my sister or my brother. Last time I went into their room and I broke something to pay him back. Now you've got the stuff in your head and in your heart and you say, I'm not going to go do those things. Okay. You still got angry, but you didn't act on them because these things are building a framework for you to live by. And that advocate is there to help you, to stop you, to restrain you. And if you do go and do something wrong, what do you do? You go and apologize, you repent, you go and if you broke something, you go and take your own money and buy it and give it to them and restore it, even though they took your candy. <laughs> okay, um, so this advocate is in us. It's there to guide us, to help us think like Jesus, right? So um, it's the only thing that can protect us from what's coming, from the the, the world, the culture. Uh, so we have to nurture it. You know, we, we've been given that responsibility. If we don't spend time in the word as often as possible, if we don't spend time in prayer uh, as often as possible, that spirit is not going to be as strong in us. Okay. 
I'm just gonna keep going back at this point. I'm just gonna interject it as often as I can. Are you a disciple of Jesus, right? And if, if you're not reading, if you're not praying, if you're not practicing these things, if, it's, if your life isn't changing visibly, who are you? What are your real interests? Are you identifying with who Jesus is, how he wants to lead you? Are your thoughts becoming like his? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead into... You know, the, the question is, is what do we do with all of this stuff, right? I mean, we read this book, we can read it over and over again, and it may have no effect on our lives, okay? Um, and so I'm going to try to tie all this as best I can, guys, into, into what I mean here. Um, One day recently, I sat there and thought, wow, we have value in this home. We've got a swimming pool we don't want to take care of anymore. I, I don't want to take care of anymore. The girls are leaving. This is a great time to downsize before the housing markets crash, because I think we're going to have that. Just a side note. And so there was some rational thinking in why this was a good move for us to come out to Medina. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if the Holy Spirit was in that. It, it disrupted Robin's life, but she was on board with it. Uh, and and I, I asked her, I said, do you feel like God told you that, that this is the right thing to do? And what she told me was, is she said, I didn't hear him saying, don't do it. So I went along with it. Okay. So, okay. So that leaves me still a little uncertain if this was all Jesus doing this, right? So it still could be me. Um, but I think the interesting part is, is when we were moving, we got together as a family and we prayed. And I said, Lord, I don't know if you inspired this whole thing for your purposes or not. I said, so if this was all me, and this was one of those thoughts I had from myself, not from the Holy Spirit, right? God can redeem that right? And so here we go. We, we have come together as a family and prayed. If this was a mistake, make it into something beautiful, right? We're moving into this new neighborhood. There are a lot of houses. Uh, the, uh, we used to have an, like one and a half acres. Now we have like 0.6. So the houses are lined up all along the street. It's smaller. It's more cozy, okay? And there's going to be a lot of families here, okay? Yet, I'm, I am a disciple of Jesus Christ, and now I'm around all these new people. And this is like a reset for us. And um, what's God's vision for this? What is it going to be like? We, there's a certain amount of initiative that you have to have when you function in the Spirit, okay? Okay? There are certain things that only God can do. And we have to understand that we can't do what God can do. But we also have to have an understanding that God will not do what we can do. And so one of my prayers, one of my thoughts was, is man, I don't want to fall back into my old habits of just going to work, coming home, hanging out with my wife and kids, right? Getting into this, I, not communicating much with the neighbors, kind of, you know, we would talk once in a while to this guy, hardly ever to that guy, almost never to that guy. We want to put this whole thing in God's hands. And yet, to stay focused on part of this message, there's a lot of people in this neighborhood and some of them are going to be very liberal. And a lot of them might hate Jesus. So how do we move into this new neighborhood, start developing friends? Um, when do we start to reveal who we are and, and you know, you don't want to run down the street the first day you get here putting crosses on everybody's front door, right? That could cause friction. 
that's probably taking a message and using your own brain to say, this is how I'm, you know, and then, and then a lot of people are like, Jesus freak, or, you know, that could go poorly. So we want to be here. I want to try to change my approach to living in this neighborhood from the way I used to be. I have to have a certain, I have to take initiative. And I can't fear that there is going to be a lot of people out there that are not going to like Jesus. And so I don't know, the vision has not been fully revealed. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not sure how this is going to go, but I'm going to live it out with you guys and keep in touch with you and let you know how it's going. So whether that's on this kind of a media or if we're going to do it live in, in the building. So you can ask me about that. Say, how's it going? And I'll tell you. Um, you see, see what I'm talking about? Where are you with all this? I don't know. Maybe there's no big changes in your life. It doesn't mean you can't change the way you are today, what you're thinking, what you're doing, how you act with kids in school or whatever home groups you have. I, I remember, I got to remember a lot of you guys have homeschooled situations, so you're not around. Well, then s let this sink in. And when you do go, maybe you're going to go to college somewhere that's not, you know, Dana's at Cedarville, and there's a lot of secular kids at Cedarville in a Christian uh, college. And a lot of the Christians have worldly approaches to life. Uh, so how are you going to be? And how are, are you going to have Jesus' interests and live for them? Let them, let Jesus give you a vision, either for where you are now or to prepare you, start praying for him to... Uh, prepare you for the next step, whenever that is, wherever that is. Are you kingdom minded? These are things we got to think about. You guys, you guys are at an age where if you start processing this now, you're not going to get to the point where I was at age 32, fully secular, complete atheist and an agnostic at some point, And then I have to try to reverse my entire mentality and go in a different direction. That's difficult. You guys are in an amazing position right now. You know Jesus, you can start praying about these things, and then God can start to move you into situations where you can say, what would Jesus want me to do? My thought is, is eventually, I, I'm gonna, here, here's the vision so far. Um, make as many friends. There's people walking their dogs all the time out here. I've already said hello to, I started a, a, a relationship, a hello, a cordial hello with one, two, three, four, at least four people in the past week, um, which is not a lot, but I'm just trying to work on people that walk their dogs past us, right? Um, oh no, five, my next door neighbor. Um, still haven't met the other neighbor yet. Um, anyway, ask Jesus to give you a vision for where you are now, how does he want to change it so you're thinking more, living more like he would want you to live and and pray over it or what's coming in the future. Lord, prepare me for when I leave home. You know, how about both? What's going on now? How can I change it? And then Lord, prepare me for the future. Give me a vision. Help me see what you want me to see. Have your Holy Spirit work in me who do you want me to reach out to today? Who are you? Wh wh lift me up, build me up, fill me with your word so I can lead a Bible study when I go to college. And then when you get to college, it's kind of your mentality already, right? We have to have a vision from the Lord. We can't do what God does, but he will not do what we can do. And we have to be willing to inconvenience ourselves, to put us in harm's way, to to go out into this community and face some scorn. Um, that's, that's what we're called to do, to reach a lost world, okay? So I wanna meet these people eventually. I wanna offer to have a Bible study here. I think that's the vision so far. And, and I'll tell you what, guys, if this ever gets really bad, um, 
especially with the way things are, I, I can imagine having a home church. Uh, Pastor Mike has already mentioned that. And so I'm praying about that. Lord, do you want us to start a home church here with the people in this neighborhood, right? Where God's word can go out um, in places where there's not a big sign with a cross on the front door, right? Where they're going to target you and make it illegal. Because that's eventually what could happen. I don't know why I'm holding my glasses up in front of you guys. <laughs> John DePace would slap me right now. It's a joke. Uh, he's very, very professional and he has a great eye. So he's helped me position my camera in the past. <laughs> anyway, where am I? I got so far into the weeds there. I think I've covered it. I'm gonna read you some of my final notes. Ah, you know how I like to ask you guys questions all the time. And I've covered some of this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it again. Am I a friend of Jesus? I want you to ask yourself that. Are you a friend of the Lord? You're, if you're a servant, you don't know what he's doing. You just do what he tells you to do. And that that's great. That's part of getting to be a friend one day is serving him, right? Not that we don't always serve him, but when you have an intimacy with him, you will become his friend. Here's my glasses again. Um, so are you a friend of Jesus? Am I a friend or do I just want to tell myself I'm a friend? Because I know that's what I'm supposed to say and think and do. Uh, are his interests my interests? If, if Jesus was alive today and lived in this neighborhood, would I be drawn to him? Would I be compelled to be with him as often as I could? Would I be following him around this neighborhood, learning from him, walking with him, okay? Taking his interests and making them my own because he is my Lord, right? What a, the world can't think that way. Independence, pride, I'm the leader. I know what's best for me. No, not us. That's not the way we think. We are servants of a most high God. We are, we hope Jesus considers us his friend. He's our Lord. He's our King. May you consider me a friend, Lord. May you give me your interests. May you give me a vision. Send me, Lord, I'll go. Do I see this neighborhood and opportunity through his eyes? Do you see your friends, your family, through Jesus's eyes. What does he want to change in how you see everything in your surrounding, right? In your surroundings. How does he want to change that, guys? Are you his friend? Are you his servant? Are you his friend? Are you willing to change? Okay. That's it. All right, man. Um, I have got a lot of projects that are half baked. I gotta go finish something out in the garage. I'm building storage racks over the garage doors <laughs> so I can get stuff up and out. And uh, this house does not have a lot of storage. So um, I love you guys. I hope everything is going well. I hope everyone you guys and your brothers, your sisters, your family. I hope everyone's healthy. Your grandparents especially. They're uh, at that age where this is more of a big deal than for you, of course. So um, I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to draw this to a close. Okay. Lord, uh, thank you for this time. Uh, thank you for getting me back in this chair, uh, getting my phone on and uh, doing what you've called me to do. What a What an amazing thing how you have fulfilled a, a void inside of me. And I am so grateful for these kids. I'm grateful for their parents for bringing them to this church and pouring uh, the Lord, pouring you into them. So um, I pray that they have a wonderful day, that they're growing in Jesus. Lord, just move them to follow you. 
Give them power from on high. Teach them about the advocate, Lord. Sharpen their conscience to monitor their thoughts. Give them the ability to choose the right and turn down the wrong. That is free will. Every single choice they have, Lord. Have them hold it up to these things that you teach us. Just be strong on their behalf. Help them to prepare for the world that is coming after them, that wants to draw them to it, away from you. I pray this in the name of a most high God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Love you guys. I'm out.